Here are some tips for how to introduce your new puppy <laughs> to your cat. Now, especially if you don't have any idea how your cat is with puppies or dogs, and you don't know how the puppy is with other animals in general, I would have your puppy in their kennel, or in a playpen, or just in the kitchen area that maybe you blocked off with a baby gate. I would also go ahead and have the puppy on harness and leash. That way, if the puppy just goes crazy excited and slams himself into the playpen, you can redirect them on leash and with food, and we'll talk more about that later. And then on the other side of the pen, the cat gets to walk around and maybe sniff the puppy, and if they feel like the puppy's too much, walk away. Or maybe the cat is already meowing and circling the kennel, like let him out, let him out, and is really excited for the new playmate. You really just never know. So that's how I would set that up, where everybody is safe. Now, the next step, make sure your puppy is on harness and leash, and that's to have them out together. And I would let the cat just do their own thing, okay? And don't drop the leash on the puppy just yet. I want you to keep the leash nice and loose, so if the puppy walks over you know, to the cat a little bit, walk over with the puppy. Don't have that leash tight, but I do want that leash on, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So. The next thing you wanna make sure that you have is a treat pouch with treats, food, hopefully your puppy, you've already seen some drive with food. I would even do this on day one, bringing my puppy home. Now maybe my puppy's a little too overwhelmed to take food, but have it on you just in case. The reason why is I want you to have some sort of redirection if the puppy is fearful or nervous, or if the puppy is overzealous and the cat runs away. <laughs> I don't want the puppy chasing the cat because the cat got uncomfortable and ran away. I want the puppy to be on leash and then you get your puppy's attention. Puppy, puppy come, food right in front of the nose and then move backwards to draw the puppy into you. This is also one of the many exercises that we do in our online school. It's called the relationship building exercise. And it's where the puppy gets used to coming to you for food or name recognition, like a whole host of things. It's a very useful redirection. And I want you to have that leverage in case you need it. And you do it over and over and over again until the puppy kind of calms down a little bit and then maybe bring the cat back down again. So this type of dynamic advocates for your cat, okay? Some cats might be friendly with your puppy, but doesn't wanna be bombarded by them. So if you notice your cat hissing, whacking your puppy, <laughs> which I know we've all seen those, those clips on social media, or runs away, it's time for you to intervene and advocate for your cat. If your cat has already been in the home, you don't want them to feel like this puppy is gonna come in and just rule the roost and be able to do what they want. There is no work it out. It's very, very dangerous. So if you see your puppy run away, hiss, or lift a paw to smack your puppy, you wanna immediately intervene. Now your cat's not in trouble. Let me be clear, if your cat is just overwhelmed and advocating for himself, that means the human needs to step in and further advocate for the cat. This will help teach the puppy boundaries and not make your cat feel overly stressed that they have to do all this by themselves. Because I'll tell you from experience, that's when you have cats hiding in cupboards and closets and at the top of their cat tree and never come down and act normal again because they feel like they had to do all the work and they don't want to. So then they just start to separate themselves from the family, okay? So that's why I say advocate for the cat. But there's also advocate for the puppy. Let's face it, we've also seen the cat videos on social media where the cats seek out the dog to whack them in the face. <laughs> and I know it's funny, you know, it makes for a funny little clip, but for a new puppy, it could create fear in your puppy. Your puppy could become very fearful of your cat, and cats love that. So they get this power trip high, and they start to seek it out more and more and more. So we also want our puppy to know that we advocate for them. You don't wanna yell, but you can shoo your cat away. You get in between, face your kitty and you shoo them away. And then you look at your puppy and you work on food work. You really focus on building their confidence and teach them to look to you whenever they're nervous or fearful. And it's the same exercise I mentioned before, that relationship exercise, which is you use the puppy's name or the name and come and get their attention, bring their eyes up to you 
and food reward over and over and over again. Anywhere between five minutes and 10 minutes, you can get in 20 repetitions of that every day. And it will really help solidify your bond with your puppy, um, as well as work on the situation with the cat. Okay, so one more word of caution. What if it goes beautifully? They love each other. They're playing with each other every day. It's the dream relationship that, that you hoped would happen. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Remember the relationship exercise that I keep talking about? I want you to continue to practice that with your puppy, especially when your puppy wants to play with the cat. Why is that? Because dogs and, and cats will learn from other animals faster than people. So what I run into all the time is when our puppy's playing with the cat or playing with the neighbor dog or playing with the other dog, they don't listen to us at all. And it's because they get so worked up in what they're doing, they just ignore the humans, right? So I still want you to practice it. I need you to practice recalling your puppy from playing with the cat or wanting to play with the cat. I'm super happy that it went well but you don't want to be in a situation where you're yelling and chasing them around the house and trying to get control. You're not going to get control of that cat, but you can work with the puppy on enough muscle memory where even if they want to play with the kitty, they're still going to listen to you and come to you. That's crucial because as your puppy grows, they're going to go out into the real world and they're going to see squirrels. They're gonna see other dogs that wanna play and they can't play right now and they can't chase the squirrel. So you need to be able to have them focus on you. You're gonna to wanna to practice that in the house because if it's kind of just a free for all, they play all the time till they're exhausted. You're conditioning the puppy's brain to be in that state all the time and not really care about humans. And then you go out into the real world and they don't listen to you and it's frustrating. So training starts at home, so make sure you get that in. I do want to do a little bit of a myth buster. I kind of mentioned it earlier and that's, oh, just let him work it out. Well, work it out means that the puppy corrects the cat or the cat beats up on the puppy. And that's a real problem. If the animals in the home feel like the humans don't have any control, they don't advocate for, if I'm the animal, they don't advocate for us. I got to do everything on my own. You're adding a layer of stress to the situation. And when that puppy becomes an adolescent and it starts to get more hormones, more ideas about who, who they're gonna be, they can be very rough with the cat. Um, or be fearful of the cat. I've literally seen adolescent dogs walk on eggshells through the living room when the cat is out and we're just waiting for the cat to jump out. We don't want that. So don't let your dogs work it out. Don't let your cats and dogs work it out. Be in charge of your own home and guide your puppy and your cat to how you want them to behave. Set those expectations, make sure everybody's on board for it in the home and you won't have those issues. And then when you layer more animals on, it'll be that much easier, honestly. <laughs> okay, so if you'd like to learn more about this and the relationship game that I mentioned earlier, along with a lot of other stuff, uh, check out our online our online school. So you can go to thepuppyacademy.com, click on our online section, and we have tons of how-to videos, more about building that relationship with your puppy that you really want to turn that puppy into the companion that you've dreamed about. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and share.